Hello, my beautiful people. It is Iggy Hero Thought Tech Unlimited, and it is quarter after 11 on Friday night. Yes, I have no life. This is what I do, and I have been doing this for as long as I can remember. So if you are watching this because you are in the Kydex holster business, I got to tell you, if you want to get ahead, you need to work when everyone else is sleeping. It sucks, but you're going to do it. And now that it went from teeth chattering weather to swamp ass weather, the transition is it's kind of crappy. So I got fans going. I'm in shorts. It is hot in the garage. Uh, hot as in 82 degrees. It is what it is because um, it's been 60s in here for the, all year. Um, anyways, easy build today thanks to uh, Pale Horse uh, with the SIG P226. I uh, got a split here that we're going to be doing. This is actually made for inside the waistbands, block for foamy, but we're going to be hooking it up with a speed lock and an RTI plate in OD green. So it should look pretty cool. Uh, if you notice, I got a pretty new shirt on. Brand new design from the guys over at Knife Kits and HolsterSmith.com. And I'm not going to lead into a lot, but I got some big news coming with me and them. And stay tuned for that. But anyway, let's get this going. I already have my uh, heat press on. It is heating up. It's actually... Oh, excuse me. That's going to happen a lot when it's this late. It is already warm. It's already warmed up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and press it. And the reason why we press it is to get the moisture out of the foam pad that's underneath it. So we're going to go ahead and do that just before we press everything. Um, this is going OD green. I already have it cut right there, right, oh, right over there. So we're gonna rock that, and then um, let's build it. Now I got some new tools in from HolsterSmith.com. You know me, I like to cut my own, right? And I cut it out of aluminum. It's cheap money, but I wanted to try the steel ones that they have at HolsterSmith on the website. So I got this one, and I ended up getting this one. So uh, if I could actually, I don't want to pull it out, but. For example, going from this, which this isn't the right one, but it's an example for this, right? To this guy, boop, boop. And then going for my other one for this, which is pretty much the entire bottom, when you have that. So it's gonna clean it up a little bit, uh, but we're gonna see how this looks. These are $8 a piece on the website. You could You can go get them now. Uh, they're readily, readily available, and these are laser cut out of um, steel. And if I can find my calipers, I'll tell you how thick they are. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, the aluminum that I use is 0.124 thick, okay? This steel is 0.184, so yeah, much thicker. Um, but again, it's steel, it's a harder material, so... Make sure if you're using the real steel, put tape underneath it. Otherwise, you're going to mark up what you're working on. Uh, but this is going to be pretty easy uh, because this mold is already blocked. Obviously, uh, we're going to have to mount this up here. We might need something underneath it. And we're going to be mounting this down here. And that is it. So, without further ado, let's get it on. First things first, we need to lay this out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab my 226. Now here is my 226 mold, here is my X300, okay, bada bing, oh, that is beautiful, alright, so, we're going to line that up, we know that we're going to have that right there, so, we need to take in consideration the hammer, and pretty much if we line up this nub that's on this, with our rear sight, that's going to give us plenty of clearance. See that? That'll give us plenty of clearance. So this, we could actually move down a little bit more because that hammer's not going to pop out that much. So, let's figure out where we want this. I'm pretty much hovering right above it. That looks good right there. This right here is lined up with the beaver tail. So I'm going to move that and drop this straight down. So we know we're going to be right here. Which means... I'm going to take this blocking. Now, you got to make sure that you do this right. This spacing is different than this spacing. So, 
I'm gonna take that, move that out of the way, and then that's gonna drop right down to where that is. And we will go ahead, and just so it doesn't move, put one piece of tape right there. Okay, and again, it doesn't, so it doesn't move. But if we go ahead and vac this, this is gonna, see it teeter-totters. We don't want that. So we're gonna go ahead, put something under it for it to not do that. But we wanna make sure See how that's at an angle? I don't want that. So, I'm gonna have to find something or make something that will be just right. And that's same thing, but we could rotate it on its side. And I think there it is right there. And with that in place, I'll go ahead and take this other half Go ahead and throw that right there. Make sure you square that up with the top of the slide because you don't want that twisting on you. I'll go ahead and throw one this way because I have found you don't want that piece falling out as you're moving it because that will stink. And what we'll do is we'll clean this up Obviously, you're going to see the tape lines, but that's okay. This will at least cleaning up just a little bit. Make sure you have a sharp razor, otherwise you'll bunch up the tape like I just did. And you know what? Let's get that guy too. All right. All right, that is done. So with this here... You know, this guy, it's an RTI 34, so just verify the side. I'll probably laser engrave which side's which, but you got your 33 and your 34. Bada bing. And that's going to go ahead down here. Adequate spacing. So we'll put that there. Now we're going to have to prop this up. And believe it or not, a lot of times, if I can, if I can get away with it, I'll use a piece of rubber bushing. It actually looks pretty good. It's just a little, it's a hair too tall. So I'm going to find something else to use and feel free to dress it up. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, so just check this. That'll be good. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and mark that right in its place. So much easier than blocking the entire thing. So we'll do one going that way, and one going this way. And one thing that I just started doing that I find it so much easier is go ahead, once you tape everything, poke the hole. That way you get a little indentation in your kydex so you know where to drill so you don't have to put it up in anyway. So that's it right there. Now we know our pivot point is going to be right here. So not that one. But we are going to want this right around this area right here. So that's going to give pretty much me, but also the end user. If they want to adjust it, they could drill a couple more holes in it. But we're going to drill ours right around here. Um, so that'll leave two in there. But we need to pump this up. And we just got to make sure it's level, which obviously that's bigger than there. So we just have to find stuff. to make it work for us. Would it look better if it didn't have that for the foamy? Yeah, of course it would. But this is the name of the game. This is what we have, and this is what we're gonna use. That's too small. That's too small. Ooh. That's too short as well. I wonder if we're gonna have to do something like, oh, Believe it or not, that is. All right, so what I'm going to have to do here is cut a piece. And what I'll do is I'll take a small dowel, take my marker here, hold both ends, mark it at the bottom of it, 
and then cut that on a scroll. Oh, I mean, like it's meant to be. Okay. And once we figure out where we want it 100%, we'll go ahead and put down the tape. Now we're ready. All right, hell yeah. Like I said, before we press, we're gonna wanna do this. And uh, I've shown you before, let's show you again. This is all ready, this is all good to go. I'm going to take my air hose right here, blow that off, and I'm gonna let it run a complete cycle. So that's 390 for 150. Go ahead and get ready with that. And what's that doing is this foam piece right here, it is taking all the moisture out of it. That way, one, you're not gonna get the bubbles and the scorching on your Kydex, and two, think of it as preheating that foam. That way, your, your Kydex will actually get hotter and will form better. And heat and pressure or suction is definitely you need the right combination in this game to get good results. And that's what we're doing. Uh, so once that is all set, uh, which I have 100 seconds left, we're going to go ahead and throw the OD green in, which we're going to use a 12 by 12, and then get everything ready, which means I need to move all these blue guns because I just did a 40-piece holster order that looks like this. I just did that for a friend, and I have another 100-piece order that I'm just starting now to get that out, as well as all the orders that I'm working on. Now, I am working 9 a.m. to 3 a.m. Monday through Friday, pretty much, trying to get caught up on these orders. So, I'm doing that for you guys. I'm also doing it for me because I like to work, but I'm doing it for you because I hate the weight, and I'm trying to push out as fast as I can. So I apologize for the wait. Everybody and their mother decided to order at the same time, which is okay. Um, I'll tell you, March has the most orders I've ever seen in a uh, in a month. So I'm instead of doing five orders a day that I was comfortable with, because some of these are like two or three holster orders. Uh, the past four days, I have done ten to seventeen orders per day, and I am almost closed out of February, and I've done most of March, or well, not most of March, I've done some of March, um, but like I said, this is the stack I have left of March, so I'm working all these hours by you, but anyways, that's going to pop out in 20 seconds, I have to clean all these blue guns up, so I'm going to let that ringer just keep going, but I got to move these. As you can hear, the alarm's going off, so we're going to throw the piece of OD green in, and get it formed, but I'm going to show you a little trick I do just before all that stuff as well. Let's do it. All right, tip number one. Yeah, all right, shiny side up. Throw that in there. This is my Teflon sheet. Sometimes it gets dusty. Top and bottom, and go ahead, bam. I'm actually going to leave it in for more than 150 seconds because we want a lot of suck. But let me show you this. There is some debris, some caca that you don't want on here. So uh, if we blow it hard enough, um, these are gonna move and fall off. We don't want that. So one, two, three. And there we go. Now it's just a waiting game, but this is gonna come out beautiful. Mwah. Welcome to the suck. And those dimples are perfect. Boom, 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 boom. Obviously none there, because there isn't none. But, oh yeah, look at that. Ooh. 
Next is easy peasy. Drill the freaking holes. Really straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and do our retention. Bam, bam. And since we have the indents on this guy and this guy, we're gonna go ahead and drill those as well. So I'm actually going to drill those uh, with the same as retention. And then I'm actually, if I could find it, because I used it earlier, use quarter inch on that. Here it is. All right, let's do this. Totally shaving my beard tonight. It is getting way too long. All right, I'm doing these ones quarter inch. And you will see why in a little bit. All right. And at this point, since this is the easiest, clean your holes. Standard, uh, it's a um, countersink bit, again, from Holster Smith. I'll tell you, I get 99% of my stuff from them. There's one part that they don't carry of mine, but hopefully that'll change. If I can, they're gonna get mini combat loops. I use these for my magnetic holsters for belts, and that's whatever. I have to get those from another company I'm not gonna name. I don't order a lot from them, but it's okay. Our holes are drilled. Everything is all. Ooh, look at that, it's pretty. Um, but you have to take this in consideration because all this work can be for nothing. If you notice, my trim jig is set up for right hand inside the waistband. Obviously, that's what it's for. It is set up and ordered for it. And it's, when I order new stuff now, as you can see right here, I I order them so that the trim jig is ambi. Oh, bad example because that one has it. Ambi with no markings on it or no foamies so I could add on Safari Land UBLs or the drops or Blackhawk or any mount on it um, instead of doing it like this where you can see the foamy. Uh, I think it's a cleaner look and it gives me more options. Um, so this one is set up not like that. So if you don't remember, you are going to cut off where your, your uh, level two hood mounts and that's going to ruin your day. That's a lot of chips. <laughs> Should be a jerk and use it as packing peanuts. cannot tell you how many times I've forgotten about that and I had to throw out material because I cut it off on accident because you just you're living in the moment so I'm going to go ahead straighten this up on the bandsaw and then we're going to go ahead hit it on the buffer wheel with the new tool um that I love so damn much I ended up moving it over I'll show you in a second Now you have your option to sand or buff the edges now, or you can do it after folding uh, with something like this. When I had to eyeball it, generally I would do it after forming, but I'm pretty confident that is pretty damn close other than this being square and uh, that right under my nose is rounded. So I'm gonna go ahead and just round this on the buffer. But you can see plenty, that looks great. So let's, um, let's get it on. Sexy, sexy. I might have to change out this wheel, but We'll see.
now you're going to know what I use those quarter inch holes for. I'm going to build a gusset to go from these two to these three. And that's going to be a nice stiffener so you don't get the flex in the holster. And I'm doing that out of clear hole sticks. So very, very easy. You just need a scroll saw and a marker. Okay. Line it up to where you want it. As close to the center as possible. That one kind of wasn't really center. is getting riveted. So, let's go ahead and set this up. I'll head over to the Arbor Press and have some fun. As you can see, I went ahead and I added the hardware for the RTI, and the reason why I did that, it is so much easier with these sausage fingers to do it when it's not, uh, when it's not bent. So I'm gonna go ahead over to the uh, the table and I'm gonna go ahead and bend it. Final assembly time. Easy peasy stuff right here. Go ahead and lay everything out. Draw on that Loctite. Ah, Excuse me. All right. And before I do this guy, I'm gonna go ahead And do the hood. Oops, drop one. All right, two out of three ain't bad. Let's get them started. All right, and remember, you cannot tighten these down. You can't torque on them because it squishes the internals, and then guess what no longer works. So I go ahead and I just use the electric gun to not waste time. And then once you get them hand tight, they'll let the Loctite do its thing. Okay, uh, at this point, I will always keep one of these on hand to check this because if this is too low, it hits this. If it's too high, you get crap. So we'll go ahead, throw these in. And oh, you drop it, but we'll even it up. Oh, right above it. That's perfect. That is perfect. I like it a lot. All right. So, just, I think some of that wiped off. I dropped it. All right, throw that on there. And now, we'll do the retention. So, this is a quarter-inch post. Quarter-inch post. That's quarter-inch bushing. Quarter-inch bush bushing. And these are 0.4375 from under the head. So that's the length of the shaft. All right. And let's go ahead, get a nice spot for that. Drill it. Clean it. And then we're also gonna use our Noga RC2000. That's to clean the inside. And I believe this is a quarter inch, comes with the kit. Throw it over. And tighten it down. And what I like to do is even up the hood where it's bent. Go a little bit tighter.
right. And bada bing. And there is another RTI right hand in OD green for the SIG 226 with level two hood. Just ready, just ah, oh, boom. And what's great about positioning this with the pretty much the uh, the beaver tail on it is your thumb helps push. And that's how I like to set them up. But you always have to make sure, take in consideration the amount of travel you have for the hammer, so you can go ahead and get it out as you need it. Thank you guys again for watching this video. Hopefully you picked up a trick or two on how to do these on a pale horse mold. Quick and easy, well, I wouldn't say, well, it's a lot quicker than doing foam. It is currently quarter after 12, Saturday morning. And um, you know what? I'm just gonna keep going. I'm not tired and this is what I do. I'm gonna crank the music. Can't play it in the background here because I'll get hit with freaking all these bands on YouTube. But everything's uh, warmed up. I got the fans on. I got drinks out here. We are good to go. So, everything used in this video was from our beautiful friends at Knife Kits Holster Smith. Give them a shout. Tell them I sent you. And uh, maybe we'll um, talk about that sponsorship. Ooh, that's for next time. See you guys.